It's been two years now since Daryl and I last hung out. That's fine. He's not really fun to hang out with. But I'll admit, he gets kind of lonely. He was my only friend. Now this video is about double exposures and we're using this Fujifilm Tiara Zoom. I'm showing in total three methods and how to achieve a double exposure, one with this camera and any other cameras that you have. But first we're going to shoot with this Tiara and just to show you its capabilities and how pictures will turn out in different light situations with flash, no flash, and all that jazz. It's a very capable and very cool camera to have and I would recommend it to everyone who's been asking on our DMs. Look it up. It's pretty cool. That's zoom. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take you guys with me in the spots that Daryl and I went to in our previous videos. If you don't care about any of that stuff, go on skip to the end to learn more about the double exposure. I know you guys miss Daryl. Comment down below if you want to see Daryl back in this thing. So I'll pack the bags, pump the tires, and let's go. So I hope you liked that video of testing this camera and going back to the good old days. If you were here back then, thank you and thank you for sticking around. And for those who just went for the double exposures, a lot of you have been asking about, because I think for 90% of our roles, there would always be a few, one, two or three double exposures on there. People have been asking. So yeah, uh, firstly, for the automatic cameras such as the point and shoot whenever I take a shot it winds for me for the next frame and when I'm done it rewinds all the way through um, and also for my SLR that is automatic it does the same thing take a shot winds to the next frame and when it's done 
rewinds all the way through. So how do you do the double exposures? How do you make them happen? So it's pretty simple. Technically, you just load your film, your favorite film, whatever it is, and then shoot the entire thing like you'd normally do, and then rewind, and then load it back in, and then shoot again. Here are some of the shots that I took with the tiara. This perhaps is the one I like the most. You can see how the grass in our garden almost blends into the grass over there, the canvas merging into the sky. And then here is almost as if I put the Golden Gate Bridge into the art box, the, my painting kit. So I like that. Another picture of the scene with uh, sideways curtains. And you can see the laptop over there and it seemed to have blended pretty well. It wasn't super intentional, but you can see how uh, certain patterns and certain shadows can complement serendipitously. The sideways curtains flowed well with the shore and the uh, mellow waves. The use of lines really does a lot of wonders. Here's another one with the curtains and the skyline and the window. I'll add the chair, adding the texture there. Here is another one of my favorites because the green truck blended with the plants, foreground, subject, and background really went well together here. Um, so you'll see a lot of use of shadows and patterns, textures, and colors. It sounds really simple to do, but um, some tips might really help you make them a little better. First, try to Try to compensate for the double exposure. So you don't want to overexpose your pictures, that's an obvious one. And maybe a little underexposed actually, maybe one stop or so. Number two is try to try to make your pictures beautiful. Don't take pictures just for the sake of trying to do the double exposure. Um, take pictures that you really like and compose them well because if not you you're gonna your pictures and double exposure are gonna, are gonna look too scattered, and you might not like them. And number three, try to work with a theme. It doesn't have to be like anything crazy creative. Just have a theme in mind or a vibe maybe. You know, uh, for your side B, you try to complement that in your head with the same vibe, and it'll look good just because it was made in the same intention. You know, and number three or four, three four. Uh, I haven't really talked to people who do it this way, but I would think that some people do it this way because I've thought about doing it this way as well. It's that I would keep track for every shot that I take and count them, to, uh, write them on my notes, and actually frame what I'm going to superimpose over it. Which I think for me is too t tedious that I haven't yet found the motivation to do it. Um, but yeah, that's another way to do it. So yeah, I think that's all the tips that I have for the automatic. Um, and for the mechanical ones, oh, comment down below if you want me to show you how to do it digitally. I know th that's going to give you a lot of flack, but hey man, I, whatever you want to do, it's art, um, go do it. And even when people say, oh, that's not how you do it, like, oh, you're so lame, blah, 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 just do it want to do it do it oh what my mom said <laughs> my professor said no nope. you want to do it do it um, anyway for the mechanical one I'm sorry that I'm gonna have to do this because I left all my mechanical cameras all across the Pacific Ocean uh, thousands of miles away uh, so I'm just gonna hopefully illustrates for you guys how it's going to be. So, this is the camera. Let's say the entire pad is the camera. And here's your roll of film, right? And let's say uh, this is what's in the middle of your frame right now. So you take a snap, image comes through here. Typically, uh, when you're done with this, and you wind the shutter, it'll go here, okay? This is now the next one. But if you release the lock, 
it should be somewhere here here you can look it up or just check your camera there there should be a lock somewhere there so you release it that uh, it's for the shutter so you when you when you wind your shutter it will only wind the shutter not connect it here so what will happen is this won't move this will stay as is over here and you click it again back it's going to double expose it awesome crappy drawing dude well i'm i'm an abstract painter that's why i appreciate the art anyway that's all i got for you right now once i get a hold of my mechanical cameras it'll be such a fun video anyway that's it for this video um is there a coming back? Am I even coming back? I don't know. I just wanted to drop by and say hi to you guys. And um, Do you have a feature picture? I miss saying that. Uh, maybe after this outro. Um, but guys, don't give up. Peace. <laughs> Bye-bye.